saw blade performance is described in terms of its geometry. In this video we'll look at straight saw blades and we'll feature a blue hacksaw blade, a yellow sawzall blade, that's the only power saw blade, and two more Japanese hand saw blades that work on the pull stroke. Given the geometry and this information, you'll be able to apply it in uh, any other saw blades, even this one. Originally I wanted to shoot the video using this cross-cutting blade, but it features cross-cutting and raker teeth. It's a combination saw blade and you need to watch another video on what's a raker and what's a combination blade. So, we'll just go with the plain geometry terms and we'll start right around with hook, also known as rake angle. It has to do with perpendicular lines. Many of these angles are referenced from lines that are perpendicular to each other and perpendicular means, not only in this video, but it means that lines that meet at 90 degrees, those are perpendicular. Okay? So that's just a little refresh there. Okay, hook angle. Uh, that's, a, that's a ruler here. This is millimeters on it. Just for scale of things because these are microscopic, very nearly microscopic shots. Okay? Hook angle is referenced. Uh, you know, the saw blade is laid on its side and is referenced from this straight line here that's formed when uh, a ruler is laid on the saw teeth. In terms of uh, saw filing and sharpening, this is the jointing line. All saw teeth must have the same length and if they aren't then uh, some of them will break off. So saw blades when they were hand sharpened back in the day then the saw blade needed to be jointed first that is all the teeth needed to be filed flat first okay so the so the hook angle is referenced from the jointing line all right and uh, this is the shot of the other hook angle or, or the other japanese pull saw blade so this saw blade works it cuts in this direction let's go back just one more shot why that direction you can see that the edge of the saw blade is there that's a straight line that's the surface that meets the wood and then you can see there's a little flat portion there behind behind the cutting edge <clears throat> and that's just the back of the saw blade if the saw blade was pull, pu sorry if the saw blade was pushed forward, it doesn't really cut the wood because it <clears throat> because it doesn't really have a sharp tip. If the wood fibers are rushing this way or coming this way, they are bent out of the way because they hit that flat portion on the tooth. Same on this one. That's why we have lots of sawdust here and not nothing here. That sawdust there is being piled up by the next tooth behind it sorry by the next tooth behind it there and that's just stuck there on the opposite face okay so who can go is there you make a perpendicular line to the jointing line and your hook angle will be referenced to the line that's perpendicular to the jointing line. In this case the perpendicular point is made at, and that's always, you make this perpendicular line at the tip of the saw blade and in this case we have a negative hook angle. It's a negative hook angle because the perpen because the edge this yellow line is following the edge is in front of the perpendicular line the second line would be the perpendicular from the direction of the cut if I put a protractor on it this is how the situation looks like 
it's about five degrees there you see I know you can't really read the numbers and uh, I don't want to move the tripod because it's a meticulous setup here but that's 180, 170, 160 so that's five degrees there it's a negative five degree hook angle on this saw blade another hook angle will be on this yellow uh, saw saw blade and it's not a negative hook angle you can see they are more uh, more pronounced this hook angle or also known as rake angle of course got its name from gardening hand tool the rake the similarity will be fairly straightforward here here is your level surface on which you're raking when let me just turn it this way there that would be a nice rake angle there where the tines of the rake are at about 90 degrees to the surface on which it runs okay so that's a 90 degree rake angle there the rake also works somewhere there on a 45 degree angle somewhere there it doesn't quite work on uh, on a zero degree angle if this was 90 then this would be zero degrees okay and this would be a and this would be a negative how do I do this so you see my hands there this would be a negative 45 degree angle the rake also works this way but it's more for grading and leveling not so much for raking you get the idea so on the previous shot negative 5 degree hook angle works and this one there's going to be positive uh, rake angles on this one with positive bite because this is fitted onto a power saw okay and this was a handsaw and on a handsaw a negative hook angles work because they don't bite into the material aggressively whereas this one needs to be powered so the same way you make a perpendicular line to the jointing line at the tip of the saw blade and you see that the face of the saw tooth is uh, this is the direction of cut is behind the perpendicular line when when you look at it from the direction of the cut simply put this is a five degree angle again 0 10 20 30 and it's a five degree but it's a positive five degree hook angle okay for a little more aggressive cut on a sawzall a sawzall is a power tool and it's for butchering a rough cuts so that would be the hook angle my next would be the top relief angle the top relief also known as clearance angle is formed at the tip the flat surface that was previously pointed out is featured in it again we're going to the jointing line and uh, to the saw tip on the saw uh, on the uh, saw tooth and the, to the tip where the cutting edge ends there and when we do that and put a protractor on it there it is just 50 10 20 30 40 50 that's just 50 degrees so we have a 50 degree relief angle the point of the or the purpose of the relief angle is that it uh, it's a clearance angle between the it's a clearance angle between the top of the surface of the material being cut and the rest of the blade material if this relief angle is too much then the saw the saw blades tip is too thin so it's gonna bend if this top relief angle is too little 10 degrees it, it works it works fantastically well on a circular saw blade but uh, usually you need to clear the uncut material it's a it's a practical um, thing that's coming from coming from the field this size of an angle works on a straight saw blade okay this works on a same top relief angle on a power saw blade if I put a protractor on it now it's 15 degrees it's perfectly fine on a power saw blade again it's not circular but it's being pulled by some some motor 
Okay. The next angle is top bevel angle. The top bevel angle is referenced differently. Here are my perpendicular lines. One line is along the side of the tooth and another one is perpendicular to it. If, the, if this makes a tip, it makes a tip. In this case it doesn't. This one is a flat top. It's got a zero degree top bevel angle. This yellow saw blade it has flat tops for butchering fibers and ripping them all out. Basically these are all ripping teeth. None of these are cross cutting. The same top bevel angle and the flat top can be seen here. You can see that all of these teeth have just flat tops and the story there. Same on the blue hacksaw blades, all of these have flat tops. And uh, if, even though the hacksaw is not a power, uh, not a power tool, but uh, but the the bevel angle is created by waving the line of teeth. Okay, more about this wave or wavy saw set or tooth. The teeth are intentionally set. This is not bent. This is bent on purpose. It's set. To be this wavy configuration, uh, the teeth have uh, flat tops basically, and uh, but because of the wave, they create they do create uh, a minimal bevel angle. If this was horizontal, then you have a actually, yeah, if this is horizontal here, then it does have a sliver of metal there that uh, that has a little bit of a bevel. So that's top bevel angle. Okay, we had that one. Next one is uh, sorry. Uh, next one is this shot here. So top bevel angle should be really looked at from this direction, and this one again is a flat top, but this one isn't. This is a Japanese handsaw blade. Again, you make the same perpendicular lines one along the side of the sawtooth and another one perpendicular across. In this case it the in the intersection there only the corner or the tip of the sawtooth will be. If I put a protractor on this then we have a 30 degree top bevel angle there. The, the top bevel angle is measured between this horizontal line and this line that's laid on on the top of the sawtooth so the metal is there and the top bevel angle is formed in the air here this is the air you're measuring down from the from the horizon from the horizontal but this line is actually not horizontal necessarily but perpendicular to the line that's run, that runs on the side of the tooth so the point of this top bevel angle, especially on a cross cutting blade, that it creates a sawtooth that has a more or a less of a thickness. Again, if the sorry, again if the sawtooth is oh I lost the picture, sorry. If the sawtooth is too thin, if there's not enough metal in it, it breaks easily. But for cross cutting you do need to score the fibers first with a thin corner of a saw blade before you can clean it out. So, because of cross cutting needs uh, saw blades with with top bevel angles. And that's another saw blade. Sorry, that picture goes before it. It's it's the other Japanese hand saw blade. You can see it's different from the previous one. This was 30 degrees, and this one, if I put a protector on it, it's 45 ish. The next picture is about side relief angle. We are back to the wavy saw set. Okay, yeah, this is gonna be important here because again, the wavy saw set creates the side relief angle. 
it's a very small feature the teeth are overhanging the, the side of the saw blade material to ensure that the blade is wider at the teeth than the rest of the blade so the saw blade doesn't get stuck in the cut especially important on uh, hand tools so they don't get stuck in the curve that's why they are intentionally creating a, a wider curve than the thickness of metal the blade is uh, pressed or punched out of so I made a picture here where I have just one sawtooth and it's a cross cutting sawtooth it's not a flat top it's been set to the side okay so that's what this is and side relief angle is measured thereabouts a line that's perpendicular with the side of the blade and the other line that runs on the on the outside of the tooth and between them the side relief angle is measured again it's important the, the size of the angle is not not so important but but the feature has to be there because the blade otherwise the blade will be stuck in a saw cut so as the blade wears and and the tip wears away and, and chips or gets bent or damaged the saw blade is more prone to being stuck in the cut okay so that's how these angles work and uh, that's what uh, that's what they mean and that's how they relate to saw blade performance